So the first connection is going to be with the power to the heater. So for this, we're going to use the AC on our high voltage, and it doesn't matter the um, order that you connect this in or the uh, color of the cable, but make sure that it's off first. And that's going to connect to what's labeled heater here. And you see underneath that that says AC or DC uh, 6.3 volts. So you use two banana cables, and again, it doesn't matter which one goes to which, but they plug in. We need to be able to monitor the voltage of these. So we want to have a multimeter in parallel. And in order to wire it up in parallel, you're going to use a second set of cables that plug into the back here. And again, order doesn't matter. And then they plug into your multimeter. Now, to have this uh, make the correct measurement, you need to have one of them plugged into the center, one of them plugged into the right connection. You want to make sure that your multimeter is set to AC and you want to have it on the 20 volt scale. So when we turn it on, it reads zero. You want to make sure that your AC knob is all the way to the left. These knobs don't matter yet. And when you turn it on, you should see this read about two volts. It's going to read a little more than two volts. So the maximum voltage you should use here is 5 volts, and you'll see this read about a 5.2 or a little more. We don't want to set this to 6 volts because that actually would put a little too much voltage across the heater. Now you want to make sure that you've wired this up correctly and that it's working, and the way you do that is by looking at the back of that, and you should see a little orange glowing region in the very uh, back of it. And that means that it is heating, it's hot, and so it's glowing orange, and that is going to be able to liberate electrons for us and give us our electron beam. These aren't actually going to go anywhere. The second step is to set up the accelerating voltage. So the acceleration voltage is going to be high voltage. So you're using the same source that you used for your heater. Again, for the heater, we're using the AC side. Now you're going to use the uh, left side of it, which is high voltage. So what you might want to actually do is turn this off so that when you're making connections, you know that the voltage is off. And what you want to do is, again, there's a lot of different connections here, but you want to look for on the right, it says electron gun. And so you're using the electron gun connection. In this experiment, we're not using the deflection plates at all. So it's helpful to have the red and the black to make sure that you have the orientation correct. So red to red and black to black. So we're connecting over here to our high voltage source. Now, something to note is that there's actually three connections. Now this one says negative 50, this is labeled zero, and this is 500. We're just using the 500 setting. So you wanna put the black in to zero and the red in to this. So this would go to positive 500 and that will help, um, that will be accelerating your electrons. Now we also want to do the readout. And instead of just reading out what's directly output, there's actually a hookup here labeled voltmeter, which says that will let you measure the acceleration voltage, which is underneath. So again, we want to do black to black, red to red. And you want to now come to your voltmeter. We're measuring voltage now. So black will go in calm, your ground. And red is going to go into um, your V ohm milliamp setting. And you want to have this set at 600 volts. We're not taking it all the way up to 600 volts, but that's the setting it needs to be on. You want to verify that it's DC, and you want to turn this on. So at this point, you have your connection set up, your voltmeter, your electrodes, and your heater. So when we turn it on, the heater is going to come back on, and this should be down at zero volts. So we're still seeing that our, our heater voltage is OK. And now when you look at this screen, the display here is going to tell you voltage on the left and the current on the right. We shouldn't ever see a very big current, but you want to take this up and you're watching the voltage on the left. If you mess up and turn this knob on the left, you probably won't see anything actually happen. And you notice that this reads 161, this reads about 163 or 164. Those numbers should be in very close agreement it's okay if they're a little bit different. So turn that up to say about 300 volts. Um, 
250 is fine, 300 will work. At some point you'll hear this make a click, that's okay. And now we're sitting at about 300 volts. This is reading 290, this is 296. So that's fine. So what's now happening is that we're creating free electrons via the heater that are then being accelerated through about 300 volts. And so that acceleration potential is going this way. So those electrons should be now shooting off straight. Now with the lights on, you can't actually see very much. It doesn't look like anything is happening. But when we turn the lights off, you should be able to see, to see a blue beam. So at this point with the lights off, you should see an orange glow from the heater and then a, a kind of blue-green turquoise glow going to the right. And right now that should be going in a straight line. So if you don't see that glow, uh, check your voltage and don't actually move on. Make sure that everything's working properly. But if you do see a straight beam of, those are actually electrons passing through low pressure helium gas and then hitting the glass surface, as long as you see that, you can move on. What we're going to make is to create a magnetic field via the Hemholtz coils. And these loops here actually have lots of loops of wire in them. So if we pass a large current through these, we'll get a magnetic field. And you can use the right hand rule to think about the fact that a coil like this will be creating a magnetic field in or out this way. So we're going to use another a low voltage power supply for this and you're going to use the DC side, not the AC side. Now, you don't want to use this yellow ground connection. You only want to use the black and the red connection. And where you're going to be connecting to on the apparatus are these very left connections. So once again, you want red to red. But now, instead of actually uh, just connecting black to black, we want our multimeter to be in series. And we're going to be measuring current, and it's going to be a reasonable amount of current. So you want to go from uh, black to black, but now you actually want to connect the left connection. And this is important. If you don't connect the one on the left, you're going to blow the fuse. You want to connect this uh, connection on the left, the one labeled 10 amps, and that comes down here to the black one. So the direction doesn't actually matter very much, but you want to make sure that this is in part of your series connection. So we're measuring the current through, uh, through this, and that's what's going in here. So now you want to make sure that your voltage and your current are down. You also want to make sure that this knob is all the way to the left. So when you turn on your power supply, it's going to look like nothing happens. Now, if you just start turning up the voltage, you're also not going to see anything happening because the current is going to be limited as well. So the first thing you want to do is keep your voltage adjust down and turn up your current adjust. Uh, you could turn it halfway or even more, but that's just going to let the voltage knob control the supply and not this current knob. Now, this is going to give you a readout of your voltage. It will also give you a readout of your current. And once you turn on your multimeter, you should see a very similar reading between your multimeter and here. So if I turn up my voltage just a little bit, I see that I have, for instance, a little, uh, little over 2 volts right now, but no current. The reason there's no current is that the knob on the apparatus itself is actually in the off position. So this will also adjust the current through it. So if I turn it up just a little bit, so kind of to the second dot, now we see that we're getting 0.2 amps through here and 0.2 amps here. Again, we expect these numbers to be the same. This is a good chance to verify that, again, you have this in the left connection because as you take up the current higher, if you have it on the right, you're going to blow the fuse. So what you want to make sure is that you don't exceed 2 amps of current. Now, you could do that either by watching the display and not turning anything up too high, or you could set the current adjust, but I'd really recommend just being very careful. You can take the voltage up to about 6 volts. So we're at 6 volts now, and you're getting a little less than 0.7 amps. So that's fine. If we start turning this knob again, we see that our voltage has not changed, but our current has. There's an adjustable resistor in there that's uh, varying how much current we get. So we can go up to about 2 amps. So I'll keep turning the knob on the apparatus itself. 
and I'm not getting yet two amps. Let me turn the current adjust knob on my device up to make sure that that isn't limiting it. That can really go all the way as long as you're careful. And I keep turning this up. And now we're at like 1.2 amps or, or 1.2 to 1.3. And again, the number on our multimeter is very similar to the number on our power supply, uh, which is good. So now if we wanted a little more current, we could turn up the voltage a little more, but for now this is probably fine. So again, to see what effect that this is having on our beam, you're going to have to turn the lights off to really clearly see it. Now the nice thing is that this display should be clearly visible uh, in the dark still. What you should be able to see is that now our beam is actually going in a little bit of a circle instead of going straight. And as you adjust your knob on the apparatus and change what your current is, as you take your current down, it should be much straighter. And as you increase the current, it should go more in a circle. And that's due to a greater magnetic field. What you'll be doing in this experiment is actually trying to measure the radius of this. So there's a lit ruler in the background and you'll be using that to try to measure what the radius of the curvature is.